going on guys the cta prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a new single board computer from the guys over at kados this is the kados vim 3. now this was originally slated to contain the amlogic s922x cpu the same thing in the odroid n2 but at the last minute they switched it up a little bit and on paper this cpu should outperform the s922x just by a little bit this board did come to me preloaded with Android 9.0, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video, but it does support Linux mainline kernel 5.0 and up. I will do a Linux video in a couple weeks, but this board is so new that I know there's going to be a lot of bugs with Linux and it's just not going to be worth making a video yet. So what I have here is the Vim 3 along with their heatsink and the Kados do-it-yourself case. I really like these cases. Plus the IR remote and all the hardware I need to mount it inside of the case. This board is powered by USB Type-C and I'm going to be using the Kados branded 5 volt 3 amp power supply that they provide with the board. But this SBC can be powered from 5 volts all the way up to 20 volts so it's got a very wide input range. As single board computers go, this thing is totally packed with tech. I'm not going to be able to go over every single thing that's on this board in this video so I'm going to leave a link to Kados' website so you can go check it out there. They have a full spec sheet and comparison charts that you can take a look at. So without a case or a heatsink, the Vim 3 is a super thin single board computer and I've always loved the way they've done their ethernet here. It's kind of input into the board. So without any add-ons at all, the board is only as thick as an ethernet port. Like I mentioned, this was originally supposed to have that Amlogic S922X, but they swapped out for the Amlogic A311D. This is still a six core CPU, four A73 cores at 2.2 gigahertz, two A53 cores at 1.8. The main reason they went with this CPU instead of the S922X is because this contains a neural processing unit. Now, in Android right now with the release they have, there's really nothing we can do with it. And hopefully they do provide documentation on this later on for Linux. But basically, this MPU is a separate processing unit inside of the chip and it's great for AI learning, facial recognition, image recognition. There will be a lot that can be done with this MPU, but we got to wait on software and documentation on it. So right now it's kind of out of the question, at least for this Android build that I'm going to be testing. This new Amlogic SoC also supports 4K, H.265 at 75 FPS, 10-bit video decoder, Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10+, and Prime HDR. So if everything's working correctly with the Vim, depending on what operating system you're using, this could be an awesome little media center. Got a couple more things I'm going to go over. For the GPU, we have the Mali G52 MP4. This is a 4-core GPU at 800 megahertz. There's two versions of the Vim 3. You can get one with two gigabytes of RAM or four. Both of them contain LPDDR4. Same thing with storage. It's using eMMC 5.0, 16 or 32 gigabytes. 802.11 ABGN and AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, gigabit Ethernet, one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 port, and the USB Type-C port does support 2.0 OTG. There is an M.2 socket on the Vim 3. Unfortunately, it's only PCIe 2.0 with one lane. We also have 40 GPIO pins, and the board will support mainline Linux, Android, and there's a few other operating systems that are in the works, and I plan on making a video on a couple of those also. The Vim 3 is scheduled to release August 2019, and there's a couple different versions. You have the basic kit. This has 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard storage for $99. They also offer the Pro version with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage for $139. Both of these can be expanded by micro SD card. They also offer a couple add-on boards like the M.2X, which will allow us to add two extra M.2 slots to this board. They have a nice little audio DAC, cases, fans, power supplies, I'll leave a link for the website in the description. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some testing. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be running Android 9.0. It came pre-installed on the built-in eMMC storage, so that's what we're going with for this video. I've assembled the Vim 3 inside of the case with the heatsink. Unfortunately, I don't have the add-on fan. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a little 40 millimeter fan just to keep this thing cool. And we're going to see what kind of performance the Vim 3 puts out. I'll be running some benchmarks testing some native video playback. We'll also do some video streaming, native Android gaming, and I'll get into a little bit of emulation by the end of this video. So this version of Android 9.0 came preloaded on my Vim 3's eMMC. There's a couple pre-installed apps like Music, Files, Gallery, Media Center, Movie Player, File Browser, and Browser Tester. We also have Update. That's about it. 
The version of Android that I'm running right now is actually a 32-bit version. The CPU does support 64-bit, but unfortunately, they haven't released a 64-bit Android version, so there's some stuff that I'm just not going to be able to test. It's pretty plain Jane. Um, there's a couple settings built in specifically for this board or other CADOS boards. We'll go to more settings, device preferences, cooling fan. So we can set it to automatic, low, medium, high. We also have control over the LEDs on the board. Heartbeat mode, always on, always off. Nothing too important, but that cooling fan can make a difference. I usually leave mine set to automatic. Google Play is also pre-installed. You can download what you need from here, or you can sideload something else like Aptoid if that's what you're into. So I've got a few things to test here. First up, I ran a bunch of benchmarks, and I want to take a look at those before we go any further. Okay, so here we are. The first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks inside of Android. At the very top here, we have the Vim 3 with the new Amlogic A311D CPU, followed by the S922X that comes in the Odroid N2, and then the RK3399 that's in a ton of boards. I've done a lot of reviews on that chip. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. I know some people are going to disagree with me, but in my opinion, it's not great. All of these benchmarks were run on Android 9.0 with fans on each of these CPUs, so we do have a fair comparison here. This is Geekbench 4, single core. The new Amlogic A311D came in at 1522, followed by the S922 at 1318, followed by the RK3399 at 13.06. Now the A311D did edge out the S922X, but this is attributed to the higher clock speed. It's clocked at 2.2 gigahertz instead of two. So I'd say clock for clock, the S922X and the A311D are right on par with each other. For multi-core, we finally broke 4,000 on these single board computers, and this has been a long time coming. I've tested a lot of boards, and with the A311D, we're sitting at 4,165, 922X, 3916, and the 3399, 3094. Same thing here, we got those higher clock speeds, so we're going to get a better score in single and multi with the A311D over the S922X. As for GPU performance, the A311D has the same GPU as the S922X, but performance seems to be a little better with the A311D. In OpenGL, OpenGL 2.0, and OpenGL 3.1. So the A311D is a better performer on the CPU and the GPU side versus the S922X or the RK3399. I have personally tested single board computers that do score higher than this, but they're in the $300 to $400 range. So this is the highest scoring ARM-based single board computer that I've ever tested for under $150. Next up, I wanted to test some 4K video files. Now I'm going to be using the built-in media player for a few, and then we'll move over to Cody. This is Big Buck Bunny, 60 FPS, 4K. I've always had issues with this on ARM devices, except for the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. It's just not going to handle this, and it's not that high of a bitrate video either. It's just something about this MP4 that really struggles on these ARM devices. But as you can see, it's already really choppy at 60 FPS. And the built-in media player will be your best bet for playing 4K content. Cody's going to do it, but they have optimized this media player for this chip. 30 FPS, same video, 4K, works great. No stutters. We're doing 4K 30 FPS, no problem at all. And if we're able to do 30 FPS 4K, we can definitely do 1080p 60. So now I'm going to move over to Cody and I have some bitrate files that I wanted to test out. Like I said, that built-in media player is going to be your best bet, but I know a lot of people are going to want to use Kodi. So we'll go to Movies. First up, Jellyfish, 120 megabits per second. This is 1080p, H.264 MKV. So 
Same thing, 1080p, 110, HEVC, MKV. Again, 1080p videos are going to be no trouble at all on this device. So we're going to bump it up a little bit. This is a very high bit rate for a 4K video. Most people will not use high bit rates like this. I know there's some out there. 200 megabits per second, 4K, UHD, H264 MKV. Got some stutter every once in a while. It's not as fluid as it really should be, but this is only at 30 FPS. Still, it's a really high bitrate video. And we'll do 200 megabits per second, HEVC 10 bit. It works much better with H.265. So overall, this is turning out to be a nice little media center. It's got that gigabit Ethernet and AC Wi-Fi in case you want to stream from your home server. Plus, we have all the streaming apps like Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, and there's a lot of 4K content that can be playable from an external drive or internal drive using Kodi or the built-in media player. Performance in native Android gaming is great. This is Asphalt 9 and it's running flawlessly. I am using an Xbox One S controller connected over Bluetooth. The board and the operating system does support external controllers. Here's PUBG. Unfortunately, playing PUBG on an Android TV without any key mappers can be very cumbersome. I'm using the keyboard and mouse here. I don't have any overlays going, so I have to hit these buttons with the mouse cursor and move with my arrow keys. But it does handle this game really, really well. And for everybody who's going to ask, the board does not support Fortnite. I did download the installer, but unfortunately, it's an unsupported system, so it's just not going to work on here. Seeing how Asphalt 9 and PUBG run, you're really not going to have any trouble with any other game from the Google Play Store. I also wanted to test out a couple emulators. So here's PPSSPP running Ratchet and Clank, and I'm at 5x resolution. It's running great, but I do notice some slowdown every once in a while, so I'm going to take it down to 3x, and we shouldn't have any trouble with this one. Now, unfortunately, this version of Android that I'm running does not support Vulkan. The chip does, and hopefully down the road they're going to release a 64-bit version of Android with Vulkan support, but for now, we're stuck with OpenGL. Performance is still pretty good, though. And finally, for emulation, at least for this video, I'm running ReDream, the Dreamcast emulator, with Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it's running at full speed. I did try to upscale, and I'm getting around 50 FPS, so you do need to keep it at that 640x480 mark, but it runs great at this resolution. I gotta get it out of the way because I know a lot of people are gonna ask. This is not gonna run GameCube or PS2 at full speed, and right now this is a 32-bit Android operating system, so the newer versions of Dolphin won't even install. So in the end, the Vim 3 is turning out to be a nice little single board computer. It is a bit overpriced in my opinion at $99 for the low end or $139 for the high end. So it's really up to you if it's going to be worth it or not for your use case scenario. If you don't mind having a bigger footprint, drawing more power, and maybe no GPIO, think about taking that $100 and investing it into a used Optiplex PC from Craigslist or OfferUp. You can get a lot more power out of those x86 CPUs, and if you're really into running Android, you can always use Android x86, Windows, or Linux on that machine. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in seeing Linux running on the Vim 3 
I was going to do that first, but I wanted to hold off for about a week because I know there's always bugs with these Linux releases and these new single board computers. And personally, I didn't want to get halfway through a video and get stuck and not be able to finish it. So I'm going to hold off on that. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Vim 3, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.